The Goat Owls is back. Taking a look at all the NFL head coaching candidates that you need to know about. There are already jobs open and more will open up as this late season goes on and into the off season. I'm also going to make way too early predictions on which teams will hire which candidates here at the end of the video. Let's take a look at what I got. I have 25 candidates that we'll take a look at. They're separated by different tiers, starting with the strongest of candidates, Ben Johnson. Everyone knows it. You know, that's the guy everyone wants. He was the top candidate last year, maybe the year before as well. He's been declining jobs he declined the commander's job which was the, he was the front runner for and i don't know if the talent or the draft cap or anything like that wasn't really the issue apparently there was some issues with him believing in that ownership you know new ownership you know maybe that that's false but that's what the reports were saying so yeah he's gonna have to like where he's going he's gonna have to like the situation the roster the draft capital the ownership and there could be some pretty appealing jobs available if the, if the Jaguars job's open and if he believes in Trevor Lawrence and that could be a solid one. The Cowboys have some talent. If that job's open, could the could he the Jets could the Jets be appealing? It's kind of up for debate. And there's some other jobs that could become open. He is going to be that top option for teams. Let's see if he accepts a job because he will have offers. Bill Belichick. I actually think, believe it or not, teams will probably be split. I mean, some teams will view it. He's the legendary, maybe the the goat head coach. We would love to have him, they'll say. And there's some of you going, yeah, he's, what is he, 73 years old? It wasn't working out. The, you know, the, the late years with the Patriots there. Younger guys are thriving in today's NFL. The league is changing big time. So, pass. Maybe teams will go. So, an interesting one. Back to the Lions. They're, the Lions defensive coordinator, Aaron Glenn, who seems like a good leader and a very likable guy. And he's... He's turning around the Lions defense for sure. It's not the best defense in the NFL, but he's turning around. But they might be the best stop in a run, which is very important. Very important because if you if you can't stop the run, you cannot win playoff football, or championship football. Because it's an easy way to beat you. So that's where he stands out. Um, you know, and and the players he's brought into Detroit, like knowing talent and developing talent. So and he's been getting interviews quite a bit. The last couple of offseasons, especially the last one, we thought maybe he would get a job. So that's a big one to watch for sure. Jesse Minter, a new one, a young one. He's with the Chargers as their defense coordinator. He came from Michigan. Harbaugh brought, Harbaugh brought him over. Minter's father was a big-time college head coach, so got that background as well. But everyone's going to like what Harbaugh is doing and their philosophy over there with the L.A. Chargers. So, and again, the younger guys are thriving right now, so he could be pretty appealing. Kellen Moore, last couple of years, has interviewed for head coaching jobs, but he's moved around a bit. It's been, ah, the Cowboys, did they not want him anymore? Did McCarthy not want him? Or did Moore want to go, you know, try out other spots to help himself get a head coaching job? The Chargers gig did not work out. He kind of declined, even though he interviewed for some jobs, but it's looking great with the Eagles right now. It is looking great. He's doing a good job. He's kind of reviving. There's talent there, but they've kind of been revived for several reasons, but Kellen Moore being one of them. Let's take a look at some more strong candidates. So, yeah, these guys have a, a good shot to possibly get a job as well. Joe Brady, the Buffalo Bills offensive coordinator, and he has a, a good background, I suppose. I mean, dating, even before the Saints, but starting with the Saints when they had some good teams, you know, working with Drew Brees, Sean Payton, obviously, that really stands out. Uh, went with to LSU, and to me, that was the best college football team of all time. He was the offensive coordinator, Joe Burrow, so he gets – some credit for that, you know, how, how good that offense was. And then he went with the Panthers. That didn't work out with the Bills for a few years. And he's learned, you know, been there with Josh Allen, and he kind of took over as the offense coordinator, interim offense coordinator last year, and things were going better. So it looks better with Joe Brady coaching the offense. It's a pretty good look right there. It's a good look. Do, do teams want to know more, you know, what if – we don't have Josh Allen. What if we don't have Joe Burrow looking at LSU, Drew Brees, or some teams are like, he's been around greatness, and he's doing a good job right now. Drew Petsing, definitely one to watch. He's got a good background, been in the league for a long time. Different teams, Cardinals offense coordinator. They're turning it around right now. I mean, what I love about the Cardinals right now is that they're getting the most out of, out of Kyler Murray. They can win passing the ball. They can win running the ball. And, and that's what the best teams in football do right now. This year seems weird. It's, it's not really the the last couple of years where it's all about passing offense. You know, you got to have balance. You have to be able to run the ball very effectively this year. And the Cardinals being able to get in there and punch people in the mouth with their running game and use a collection of backs, it's pretty appealing right now. So I'd watch out for Drew Petzing. He's got a really good background coaching receivers, coaching quarterbacks, offensive coordinator, doing a really good job. Mike Vrabel, who was a really good coach for the Tennessee Titans, a little bit of a surprise fire, but at the same time, thing it kind of got old. You know, it kind of got old where it's like, you run the ball, you run the ball, you run the ball, and you open it, open up the pass by running the football. We have a certain type of players that we like. We're not going to value receivers that much. And I do believe he wanted to keep A.J. Brown. 
on board with the Titans. Obviously, that was a massive miss, but maybe he takes some blame for that. It really wasn't him. But, again, looking at this year, physical running the ball football is making a comeback, but we'll see how it is in the playoffs. And that's what Those Tennessee Titans teams were really good in the regular season. And you got to the playoffs, and it's like if you can't throw the ball as good as the rest, as good as Mahomes, as good as Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, you're, you're not going to beat them. You know, you're not going to beat them. Come close, you're not going to beat them. So, will that be... Will that make him not, you know, not so appealing? Right now, he's with the Browns, obviously, just a consultant. But uh, people value him, obviously. Matt Nagy, it did not work out with the Chicago Bears, but teams are going right now. Hey, the Bears are. It's not working out for the Bears, no matter who's in there right now. It doesn't look good. They need another coach, so he's doing good with the Chiefs. More learning experience. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, he's been around great play, won Super Bowls. So, hey, we're not the Bears. Maybe we're better than the Bears. We give him a shot. I've already heard about him being linked to a specific team. We'll talk about that at the end. I'll make that way too early a prediction. But, and then Todd Munkin, good background. Buccaneers, Georgia Bulldogs win a national championship, and now with the Ravens and doing a really good job. Um, he had one one really disappointing outing as a play caller, and that was the playoff game against the Chiefs AFC title game last year, but maybe he's learned from that, doing a really good job, um, you know, keeping this offense fresh and elevating it. Lamar is as good of a passer as he's ever been, so that looks really good uh, for Munkin right now. When he was with Tampa, that was the best Jameis, guy like Jameis Winston who can't get a starting job. I mean, he's starting right now, but the best he ever was too, so... Uh, is he head coaching material? That's what people will question. Do you feel like he can lead a team? I don't see why not, but that kind of will be the question. But these are some strong candidates here uh, to watch for, just like that first slide. Interesting tier of three candidates here. I'm titling it head coach material, but because there's something else that may be there that's stopping him from being hired as a head coach. And Brian Flores, one of the best defensive minds in football, what he's doing with that Vikings defense who really isn't super talented, but they play he elevates them, makes them play better, leading the NFL in turnovers right now, finds different ways to get pressure, uh, adding to his defense. Used to be kind of a man coverage only guy, a lot more zone now, so mixing it up. So really good defensive coach, but could be a distraction. What went out at Miami? I mean, he won games at Miami, but Tua wasn't a fan of him, and I mean, they're even coming out saying what happened. So that's not going to be appealing. There's going to be teams are going to get questioned about it. And he has the lawsuit going on, the whole situation where he thought he was getting the Giants coaching job and, um, you know, all that. So he could be a little bit of a distraction. And it's like maybe teams are going, do we want that right now? Do we want to let all that play out before we feel comfortable hiring him? So my prediction, people putting him at the top, most likely to get it towards the top, most likely to get a job. I'm going to say most likely he does not get a job because of all that. And the Vikings really lucked out getting him, like right place, right time. Um, you know, because he could be their defense coordinator for the long haul if I'm right there. Steve Spagnola, definitely worthy of a job. One of the very best defensive coordinators. Wins Super Bowls. I mean, the Chiefs, best part about the Chiefs right now actually is the defense. Even looking at the Super Bowl down the stretch last year, that's something. But he, he doesn't really get interviews or anything like that. It almost seems like he, everyone knows he wants to stay put. But at the, because he's been around forever, you know, at the point of his career. But maybe he goes, hey, done enough here. Let's go get a head coaching job, and then we'll call it retirement after we're done with that. So it's a possibility. And Lou Anaromo has been getting interviewed more so a few years ago compared to last, but a really good defensive mind. But if he wasn't hired, if he was passed up in those times, I don't know if he's going to get a job this time because the Bengals' defense isn't playing that well right now. I don't really think it's him. I think the, there's a lack of talent compared to the past. But it, I could see it start to pick up here. We're in week 11. I could see it start to pick up because he's a really good defensive coach, really good defensive play caller. He's a guy that likes to mix it up a bit. So those guys, head coach material, there's kind of an obstacle there what could stop them from getting a head coaching job. More candidates to watch, and some of these guys could be strong contenders. I think the strong ones we talked about are a little stronger. But Cliff Kingsbury being, being talked about, quite a bit right now because the commanders are one of the better NFC teams, one of the better teams in football right now. And it's because their offense is so explosive. It's so tough to stop. So everyone's going, Hey, maybe Kingsbury is good. Maybe he deserves a second chance. Maybe he's learned from some things, but I do think it's a little bit more of a wild card because it's been one year. It's a tough game plan. The commanders will teams start to figure it out. Going back to those Cardinals years, they were so explosive, so good early on, or even for a couple years. And then there was kind of a game plan for it. So I think teams would be a little hesitant. You look at the Cardinals right now. They're playing very, very good without him after moving on from him. So I think he needs another year like this, and then he'll probably get a head coaching job. Bobby Slowick, who was uh, kind of in the coaching carousel last year in terms of getting interviews 
and got a lot of credit for what the Texans did, what C.J. Stroud did. Didn't get a job. Question is play calling sometimes. It's a little questionable sometimes. And the, right now the Texans aren't playing the best ball. I'm not really worried about it. But is he head coach material? I don't think he's as good of a play caller as some of the other guys we talked about. So if he wasn't hired last cycle, will he be hired this cycle? Liam Cohen, one that's being brought up a lot. People think he has a legit chance to get a job. I could see it. Uh, he's been bouncing around quite a bit, though, like college with Kentucky, the Rams, Kentucky, Buccaneers. Has he done – I mean, in the the first year with Will Levis in Kentucky, that Will Levis looked like a future top pick and then stayed for another year or two. And I think that first year he looked really good. After that, it's been a little underwhelming up until this point, doing a really good job with the Buccaneers. It's very explosive offense, and everyone thought the Bucs offense take a step down. Baker take a step down with Canales gone, and just maybe it was a one-year wonder type thing. No. I mean, Baker looks even better, so people are going, okay, there's something there at Liam Cohen, but I think it's another one that we need a bigger sample size because just like Kingsbury, it, it's in San Slowick. We need a bigger sample size than just one really good year as an offense coordinator. As a, as a coach at that position to give him a higher position. So and then Arthur Smith didn't do a great job with the Falcons, but he had some teams, and right now he's the Steelers' offense coordinator, if you didn't know that, and he's doing a fantastic job. But the Falcons had some teams that could put up a fight that last year. One, I mean, in the NFC South, they are putting up a fight. They're close in all those games. They just had an awful quarterback situation. So, I mean, if he had a decent quarterback, he probably would have kept his job in Atlanta. He'd probably still be there right now. So teams go. And I said when the Steelers hired him, I liked that hire. People thought I was crazy. I think he's a really good offense coordinator. I don't know if he's a head coach, but I mean, if he had a if he had a decent quarterback, he had a terrible quarterback in Desmond Ritter, and he picked him and he decided to start him. So that's where kind of you knock him a little bit. But if he had a decent quarterback, I think he would still have that job there. So it's an interesting one to watch. And then Zach Robinson, who is the new Falcons offense coordinator, he came from the Rams, so he has that McVay background. The Falcons, I think he needs more of a sample size. We see a little bit more to give a head coaching job. The Falcons have a lot of talent, and the play calling is its getting better. I thought it started the year a little questionable. I, I just think we need to see more from him. The, that's kind of the, the theme of this uh, this list right here uh, compared to the stronger candidates. But these guys have a shot to get a job for sure. And here's some more to add on that list we just talked about. These ones are a little more dark horse-like. Josh McCown who is the Vikings quarterback coach right now. And a couple reasons he could be one to watch is because, yeah, learning from Kevin O'Connell, Vikings explosive offense. And, I mean, he deserves some – I mean, Sam Darnold's starting to come back down to earth a little bit, but deserves some credit for Sam Darnold being a complete bust to actually being starting starter worthy. The Vikings are 7-2. and two, So – and then a few years ago, remember, the Texans were very serious about hiring him as head coach. He really felt like they wanted to, but it's like, mm, it's too early. It's too early to do it, but we kind of we kind of like you. We want to, so hey, maybe he gets back in the mix. I definitely could see it. Dan Pitcher, Pitcher got some looks last year. The the Bengals offense coordinator definitely got some looks, uh, but Brian Callahan got a job, and uh, who who was the Bengals offense, the former Bengals offense coordinator? And I think people want to see what kind of if he ends up being a head coach. Right now, Titans are a work in progress, so maybe. And, but the Bengals offense is looking really really solid right now, so. Very explosive, and they've been explosive, so be a good guy if you're looking for straight offense. Uh, and then Jeff Halfleaf, the Packers defensive coordinator, he came from a uh, Niners defensive back background as a, co- as a coach and then went to Boston College, was actually the head coach at Boston College. I mean, they didn't do too well, but it's all about recruiting, and if you're not a big school, you're not going to win. He's there because he can coach. You know, Maybe he couldn't recruit at Boston College. That's fine, but he can coach, and – I keep hearing players speak very, very highly of him. And the Packers' defense is already better this year. We'll see how it plays out the rest of the year. So that could be a sneaky one to watch. And then Vance Joseph, the Broncos' defense, is playing out of their mind right now. Uh, he's got some looks over the past. It didn't work out when he was a head coach, obviously. So uh, people probably wouldn't be super thrilled if they hired him, but he's doing a good job right now if someone's looking for a defensive-minded guy. And, of course, we got to take a look at a few college coaches to watch. Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks are number one right now. I already heard that some NFL teams will be interested, already looking into him. I think it's unlikely he leaves. It's a really good situation in Oregon, a lot of money. A lot. Of, it's a really good program. A lot of money he's making, but a lot of money to spend to make that roster uh, you know, loaded like it is right now. So I don't really see him leaving. I think he likes where he's at, but... Maybe he wants to take that next step, go to the NFL. Deion Sanders, you know, Schefter talked about it, talked about it like 
Sanders and, and his son, quarterback Shadur Sanders, who's going to be the top quarterback drafted, they kind of want to go together, and some teams could entertain that, but I don't see it. I Sanders is a good hype guy. Players want to play for him. He can recruit at Colorado. Is he a like? Could he be a great NFL coach? I, I I know he knows defense. I know he knows talent for sure. There, Colorado's the most undisciplined team right now. It sounds messy with him and his son on a team, so I don't see it. It's being reported. And here's one that I've heard nothing about. I'm just a huge fan of Kenny Dillingham, actually Oregon background, uh, Arizona State's head coach. He reminds me so much of Ben Johnson, another Ben Johnson who is that top top candidate. Uh, very similar play style and offense, high-energy guy, young, new offensive mind, but with some old school in it as well. With pound the football, you have to incorporate the run. I, I love I love him as a head coach, but – Probably going to stay at Arizona State. Could get a better job in, in college level. I would love him as an NFL coach. Massive fan. Yeah, two guys with Oregon backgrounds. One with, one at Oregon now and Dan Lanning. So those are some of the college coaches. I guess there could be more. We used to get Matt Campbell been, being brought up, but uh, it just never happened here. Let's make some way, way, way too early predictions just for fun. We usually have pretty accurate predictions once we're in the offseason, once we know the openings. Kind of have to predict the openings here. We already know some of them, but... First, the first one here, Kellamore, the Cowboys, either could be too easy of a prediction or super bold because he left the Cowboys and was that like a bad breakup? Like it's still kind of up in the air. Like was McCarthy's job? Some people have said that McCarthy wanted to move on from him and Jerry Jones just kind of signed off on it. And some people said Moore just kind of wanted to leave and just look for better opportunities uh, to maybe become a head coach because he's been getting interviews. But I... I I think the Cowboys will move on with McCarthy. We'll see. Maybe he gets a pass because of the injuries this year. Maybe he gets a pass. But Kellen Moore is a guy that they know Dak Prescott and even that running game of the Cowboys worked well with. I know the the outing for him last year with the Chargers didn't look that great. The Chargers are playing much better right now. So that doesn't look great, but he's doing a really good job with the Eagles. Um, the Cowboys, Jerry Jones, very picky about who he hires. You got a Cowboys background guy here. A guy he knows about, he knows the offense should work. And then they can make up if there's any bad blood. If there's super bad blood, then, yeah, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't happen. Um, but I'll go with that. Ben Johnson, I'd say the most appealing spot is probably the Jags, even though there's some revamping to do. But it's going to depend on his thoughts. Um, two things. His thoughts on Trevor Lawrence. A lot of people in the league think he has the talent. You know, I, I think he'll certainly think he can turn him into a Jared Goff, at least. You know, he's supposed to have more talent than that, but he's not quite there right now. Um, and then they have a one-two punch at running back. They have some pieces on the offensive line. They got to do a little bit more. They have pieces on defense. The defense has been a little underwhelming, though. And then, I guess, ownership. I don't think there's an issue with ownership with the Jags, but they are they play overseas a couple times a year. They're, you know, but at least they're building a new stadium here. Will the overseas thing kind of throw him off? Some people think the Cowboys, Ben Johnson can go to because they have Dak, they have CeeDee Lamb. Sure. Jerry Jones are a little too controlling. Do they have the running game? I know does it, how much does he want to come in there and build? That's the question there. The Jets, I talked about earlier in this video. I'm already hearing Matt Nagy was linked to a certain team. It's actually the Jets right now. Some, you know, some people inside over there kind of linking them Matt Nagy to the Jets. And first glance, it looks pretty bad because it was really bad with the Bears, but everybody's really bad with the Bears right now. And yeah, he looks good with Andy Reid calling plays and Patrick Mahomes leading the way. So how much credit does he deserve? It's a little risky. Jets could see them making an interesting hire there. And the Saints, I thought about two Saints background guys, Aaron Glenn and Joe Brady. When Aaron Glenn was with the Saints on the defensive side of the ball, really good leader, can coach defense. They have one of the top run defenses in football. And the Saints were some of the best teams they had in football. They were the best stop in the run. Maybe get back on track there, but and get a Saints background guy, just get a really, really good leader here. Uh, better than what they've had. And the Bears, they got to fire Matt Eberflus, right? They already fired their offense corner. I think they absolutely have to go offense. I'm not saying you better go offense. I think they're going to think we absolutely have to go offense because they, they're they all in on Caleb Williams. They were all on him when they drafted him first pick. He's been underwhelming so far. Doesn't mean he'll continue to be, but they, they're they going to be desperate to make him over everything else work, which they should be. I'm not disagreeing with that. So they're going to have to get an offensive mind and a guy. I thought about Joe Brady. I thought about uh, I mean Ben Johnson they would love. I don't think he's going to go there. I think he would rather go to the Jags. I think he would rather go to the Cowboys. I think he would rather go to the Jets, actually. The, 
some young pieces on the offensive line. Um, One-two punch at running back. They have super talented defensive players. He's got to find that quarterback in the future. So I think Ben Johnson more likely to go to one of those teams. The more, what more I just talked about the Jets, maybe Ben Johnson, the Jets possibility. But Joe Brady, Drew Petzing for the Bears, one of those options. I look at Joe Brady's resume. Worked with Drew Brees, worked with Joe Burrow, with the LSU Tigers. College background, Caleb Williams is a star. Caleb Williams was a star quarterback at the college level and now working with Josh Allen. That makes a lot of sense there. To be determined how he is, you know, away from Drew Brees, away from Joe Burrow, away from Josh Allen when things are already made for him. And it was his, it's his first year as an offense corner. We'll say one and a half because he's interim coach. So he's a little risky, but I think the Bears will like that background. And we talked about, the, especially at the beginning of this video, the other guys that are strong, strong candidates. But the more I talked about the Jets job, I mean, they have talent. Could Ben Johnson go there? It's definitely a possibility. The Jags make a lot of sense. The Cowboys, it's going to determine uh, if there's really you know big-time bad blood between Kellen Moore and the Cowboys. If there is, I can see Vrabel. I can see Belichick. For sure, I can see Belichick to the Cowboys. I think teams might be, he might be hesitant to take a job, and teams might be hesitant with the 73 or so-year-old guy there. Um, but, and Aaron Glenn, I can see Aaron Glenn to the Cowboys as well. Aaron Glenn, I, I think both those Lions guys, as long as they accept offers, as long as they accept offers, I really believe both will get a job. But they have to accept the offers. They're riding out first, riding out for a Super Bowl and for the right opportunities. I've heard I've had multiple people tell me, even Bears fans, I hope the Lions win the Super Bowl. They're saying that right now because they want those guys. I think for the Bears' sake, mainly Ben Johnson to leave, come to them. I don't think he'll go to the Bears, but we'll see. Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams would be pretty appealing. They have some appealing defense. Going from the Lions offense line to the Bears offense line. No, you got to build it, though. So that's that's Why is he so hesitant right now? Um, he wants a really good situation, which I can understand. But you got to go there and help build it. But you also, sometimes the issue is coach wants to build it. He wants to pick the players, the type of players, the GM or the owner. That's the Cowboys issue, the owner. They want to pick the players. And they get the final say on the players. And that's a little bit of a dispute throughout the league. through Different people's philosophy there. Uh, you know, coaches, I coach the team. I know I, I should have the final say what type of players we draft or sign. So it's a lot of guys butting heads. He wants to, I think Ben Johnson, that's mainly the thing. He wants to find the right situation. Jags, pretty solid situation. The more I talked about the Jets, pretty good one uh, as well there. So I am predicting all these coaching jobs to open. Jets and the Saints already open. Two more to look out for. Three more to look out for. Browns with Kevin Stefanski. He's been on and off every other year. They got talent, but they have a quarterback situation. How do they? So where do they view Stefanski at? Um, Antonio Pierce with the Raiders. They fire their coaches so easy, but I, I like to think they stick it out with him and just try to find a quarterback first. And then Brian Dayball, which you got like deep down, you believe he's a good coach. He's a good offensive mind. It's not working out. Uh, Daniel Jones has uh, regressed. So do they blame for that? They keep drafting well. They bring in good talent especially on defense. So do they think, hey, Joe Shane, like, do they think I'm doing a great job? You're not making it happen. Or do they give him a pass because the quarterback play? It's a tough one there. So the, the Giants, Browns, and Raiders are also ones to watch. And sometimes there's a surprise firing. Titans firing Vrabel. Uh, Texans were firing guys after one year, uh, a couple, couple years there. So there always could be um, – Big time surprises, you know, so we will see. But it's always really fun to talk about these different guys and their different backgrounds and what they coach and what teams could be interested in. So let me know if you have way too early predictions. Some people are probably going to make a big deal about these. They're just really early. Um, they make sense for the most part, I would say, depending on the bad blood situation with Kellen Moore there. Uh, but, yeah, let me know your thoughts, who you want your team to hire, who's going to get fired, anything. Always love talking to you guys in the comments. Always interact with you guys on our Twitter slash X link in the comments if you want to check that out. Loads of NFL content every single week. Weekly pick score predictions, power rankings, a lot more of a recent mock trap that went up. We have a recent offseason trade video to watch for that went up. A lot more to come. Playoff predictions coming up. Uh, we'll take a look at early free agents. We got you covered. More than anyone, join us. Like, subscribe to No Kids On. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.